Before we run this Drupal installer, let's take a look at the file structure in the Drupal directory that came when we downloaded Drupal to our computer. So I'm heading over to Finder here, and we're looking at the Drupal folder that we downloaded. Each directory in your Drupal directory will contain a readme.txt file. These files are incredibly useful. They contain information about what to do with the directory and how to treat its contents. And you should definitely take a look at these files when working with your Drupal site. The top level of your Drupal directory contains key files that run your site. You should not delete any of these files because they all serve a purpose. There are also a number of directories in here which are of note. The core directory is where the core code for your Drupal site is stored. You should never, ever, ever edit anything in this directory. You may need to replace the contents of this directory when doing a Drupal core security update. Note that the path for security updates is not yet settled in this version of the Drupal 8 beta. You should not use Drupal 8 for production until this is settled, because this is a content management system which does allow people to log in and make changes to the database. So you want to make sure that you're always on top of security updates. The modules directory is where you will place contributed modules that you download to extend the functionality of your Drupal site. The profiles directory is available because the Drupal community has created a number of installation profiles that include pre-configured or customized elements for Drupal to fit a specific solution. For example, there are profiles for commerce, profiles for government, and profiles for many other types of sites that you might want. This can be a great way for you to get started quickly with a site that has a lot of wonderful features. The themes directory is where you will store any contributed themes that you download from drupal.org or any custom themes that you build yourself. And last but not least is the sites directory. This directory is crucial to your site or your sites if you're doing multi-site. If you are only running one site from your code base, then you will primarily work with the default directory inside the sites directory. In here is a settings.php file as well as a default.settings.php file if you mess up your settings.php file and need to start from scratch. Settings.php contains all of the info that your site needs to run, including the database information. The files directory will contain all of the temporal files for your site, such as images, PDFs, and cache files. What you're not seeing right now, but you will see if we take a look at an existing site, so let's move to a different directory where we have a site that's already been installed. Once your site is installed, the sites directory will contain a directory called config, followed by a long hash. This is where all of the configuration changes that you make to your site will be stored, enabling you to move configuration from one environment to another. This aspect of Drupal 8 is still being finalized. We will demo it in the chapter on managing and deploying your Drupal site. But the way that it works when you use Drupal 8 may be a little bit different from what you're seeing demonstrated here. If you're using version control, most of the items in the sites directory are ones that you will want to leave out of version control because they are temporal or environment specific. In this lesson, we went over the file structure of a Drupal site directory. We will take another look at this in the chapter on maintaining and deploying your Drupal site. We will also visit this directory often throughout this course, as we will need to be able to put contributed modules and themes into their appropriate locations in the directory structure. We will need to be able to do this in order to extend our Drupal site. And now, let's install Drupal. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials, and be sure to like us on Facebook.